We're back with our Agion A108 differential temperature controller. We're just going to demonstrate how to access the parameters, um, how to change the differential on, differential off, and how to navigate around the controller. So the first point to make here is, probably seen on our previous video, if we want to look at the differential currently, the two temperature readings, simply press the down arrow, we get our T1, our T2, and we get the differential there. Now, you can change a display to show either T1, T2, or the differential um, permanently. At the moment, I've got it set to, to show the differential because that's the important um, element here. Now, getting into the menus, it's uh, pressing and holding both the up and the down arrow key simultaneously, which we'll do now. And you can see it's flashing code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our code. So press and hold the set button and increase the value. There's two options here. We can go for 28 or 38. 38 is the more in-depth one. It's more like a factory calibration. So we'll go for 28. And now once that's in, we can go up. And we can see straight away our first parameter there, which is a set point. Um, it's the ultimate overheating temperature. You can set this um, up to P4, which is the highest allowable set point, um, which can be up to 100 degrees C. It's quite rare we have the systems um, set that high. And if we keep pressing up, we'll see TD. So it's the default value. This is what I was talking about previously. Um, at the moment, we've got it set, if we have a look here, set to show the differential, um, but we could show either of the two sensors. If we wanted to change that, it's a question of pressing set and just up and down on the arrows until we get our desired change. And then back up again, we've got R0, which is the on temperature differential on so four degrees c that's standard if we want to change it up and down with the arrows again we then move to r1 r1 is the differential off so we're going off at two degrees c so you can see it's quite straightforward to change those basic values um, R9, there is a delay there for the pump, which you can have when it first um, initiates the controller. It's power up delay. Um, we don't generally set those, but it can be useful because it can just allow any system to stabilize um, prior to operating. So we, now we go to P0, which is the antifreeze temperature. So it will turn the pump on and circulate water if we're getting too cold. Um, at the collector for a solar system. P1, it's the opposite. It will turn off the pump um, if our tank or collector is, um, is getting too hot. And then we have H2, it's a hysteresis value um, for the superheat temperature. P4, highest allowable set point, we can see here. 100 degrees C. And then moving up to P6. P6 is a recirculation. So what we can do is, um, again, we can circulate every 25 minutes for 25 seconds. Um, can just stop the system from stagnating. And the next one, cooling yes or no. Um, this parameter is used to cool the water in the reservoir if it is warmer than the collector. If set to yes, the pump will turn on when the reservoir temperature is 3 degrees C higher than the collector temperature. Again, by default, that's not on, but the option is there. Um, now we have here, P8, maximum time of the activated pump if activated manually. Um, now, manual pumping is quite useful for testing, if nothing else. Um, but it's 300 there, so 300 minutes, and then we go down to, oops, sorry, to P9, and again, 
maximum time of the activated pump if it's activated by the difference. So this is where we have an error in the system. Maybe pipe work's not quite there. Um, perhaps we're losing some water. Issue with the circulation, it will time out after 300 minutes as well. So the pump is not going flat out for that whole duration. But what we can see there is actually a lot of those parameters are not what I would consider essential. Um, you can add them on, but as we've seen in our previous video, um, the controller works quite well straight out of the box. Um, and the main changes you might want to make would be around R0, which is our turn on differential and R1. Now, if you get stuck in the menu in any way, you can power off, which will cycle the timer. Or again, we can simply press and hold and we'll go back to just viewing our differential.